Well, hello again, and welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. So in this week's episode, I'm not working on the Duke. I'm not working on Snowman. I'm going to continue working on Little by Little. Picking up where I left off last week, I'm going to continue knocking all the old paint, the layers of paint that are on this truck after 40 plus years of ownership. Try and get it down to bare metal. Uh, I got some body work to do. I got to work on some of the dents on the fenders here. And just try and get this truck as smooth as I can and ready for at least one layer of etching primer because it'll be so much bare metal. I need something to adhere to the, the bare aluminum. And then probably one, maybe even two coats of high build primer to get this thing as smooth as I can and try and have a really good palette to put down some nice metallic blue paint and have a good, uh, have a pretty sharp looking truck as an end result. So actually doing body work is not that much fun. It's, uh, it's a lot of hours, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, and it's just not that exciting. Uh, so hang with me on these videos. I know it's probably not that exciting to watch. I'll try and make it as interesting as I can. Trust me, it is even more unexciting actually doing the work but it's a necessary evil if i want to try and get this truck painted and done finished and down the road next year there you can see some of the some of the bumps there from all the rocks from all the rock chips from the, the years of the steer tires going down gravel roads so i did get a uh, on the recommendation of my friend blake who's a hell of a metal worker he said what you can do here is just get yourself a, a nice set of hammers and dollies so i picked that up and he says, just use some heat. So I might get my oxyacetylene torch out and we'll try and warm some of this stuff up and then try and hit some of these, try and hit some of these dents and bang them as smooth as I can. Cause at the end of the day, you want to use the least amount of filler as possible. So I'll try working on that. I, I, again, I'm just going to do lots of sanding and, uh, and see how much I can get done in this particular Saturday. Now I would really like to try and get this truck painted before winter. I do have a bit of a challenge with that because if you remember when I painted Snowman, kind of the technique that I use is I hang a tarp and I make kind of what I call a hillbilly paint booth. And then I open up the doors, whatever, four feet, and I put a couple drum fans there to try and exhaust all the paint fumes uh, and the overspray out the door. The problem is, as I, can, as I get closer and closer to winter here, it's gonna be too cold. When it gets well below zero, Obviously the shop's heated with the uh, tube heater, but if I open the door in the winter time, all the cold air is gonna come blasting in and it's, it's just not gonna work for painting. So I'm gonna try, worst case, I get all the body work done and I get this all smooth and ready to go. And then I paint it, prime and paint it first thing in the spring. But it would be pretty nice to get this done, painted before the winter. And then I could spend the winter putting all the chrome on like the new steps from Bagger Industries, the pipes, lots of fun stuff. So with that, I'm gonna stop talking and start working and uh, see how much paint I can knock off this thing today. This movie old Jack Burton and the pork chop Express I tell you if I had a bigger shop and I had more space I would probably build I would probably build one of those okay so my typical motto is don't stop till you're done so I just kept grinding away but as you can see this this Vivor polisher really knocks the paint off I'm a big fan of it it's a nice efficient way if you want to go down to bare metal now of course, I still got to go around all the huck bolts, but it did a nice job knocking the paint off. So yeah, you pick one area and you just keep going until it's done and then move on to the next one. And what I'll probably do is come back with my uh, Milwaukee 
uh, angle grinder with a buffing wheel on it and go around all the hucks. Now that's that what really takes a lot of time. But for now, I just want to get the, the bulk of the paint off this, off this truck. So I'll just keep grinding away and move on to the next section. Lots of work, but it is satisfying when you get the uh, when you get it down to bare metal. So again, it's still going to take a lot of time to to go around all those hucks. Now, normally I wouldn't be using the the buffing wheel uh, anywhere near the hucks because it would flatten them out. But this truck's been painted so many times that the huck bolts have already been flattened and sanded down. So I don't mind I don't mind going over them just a touch. Again, I am trying to stay away from them because I don't want them to get perfectly flat. I still want them to have some profile, but obviously where the hucks are good, like here, I'm going to try and stay away from it with the, uh, with the buffing wheel because that thing is so uh, abrasive that it'll just flatten them right out. All right, just like the truck's name, little by little, keep at it. Yeah, that's actually coming along pretty nice. Making decent progress there. But uh, yeah, just stepping back, looking at the aluminum, makes a guy think you could actually, you could sand it down and buff it out like they do with the wheels and have a polished truck. But I guess that wouldn't really work though because you got the, the fiberglass cowl and the fiberglass caps, but I suppose you could paint them black and have mirror, mirror aluminum everywhere else. <laughs> anyway. I'm rambling. Just reminded me of that, uh, there was a Peterbilt that uh, a bunch of guys in Eastern Canada built years ago. I think they called it a 369 because they used a 359 cab, I believe, or maybe a 379 cab and then some 359 parts, so they called it a 369. And they had all of the panels punched out in 304 mirror stainless and then huck bolted them back on there. And so the, the truck was basically a mirror going down the highway. It was, uh, it was quite a looker. that truck ended up but yeah it was uh, it was something else so anyway uh what i'll do is i'm gonna keep uh keep grinding away here no pun intended making decent progress it would sure be it would sure be cool to get it all the way down to the bare metal all the way around but i suspect i'm gonna probably get bored of using the polisher and i want to pivot to something else and then that's when i'll start tackling the uh the dents and the bumps in this fender oh fun fun Man, I tell you, working with this, this polisher for hours on end, I won't need to put one of those Stallone arm wrestling machines in my truck. Put your wrist into it, you lean forward, and you put a lot of weight in there. But you have to use your whole body to it. It's like your whole body is one piece of machinery. Anyway, we're making, making some good progress. Oh, it is a lot of work though. But it's sure neat to see all the paint come off of here. Well, like I say, just keep grinding, I guess.
Oh, man, it's a lot of work, but it's sure putting wind in my sails. This is looking really, really good. It's getting the, the bulk of all the old paint off there. Man, I'm so excited that this truck's finally gonna get some paint and be finished. Oh, cool. All right, well, I think I'm just about done on that wheel, so I might have to add another one and uh, start working my way around the back. Yeah, if I can get this cleaned off, keep working my way around, do the back, do the other side of the bunk, and do the other side of the cab. And then uh, by then, I think I'll be done with this for the day, and then I'll get going on yes. taking out the dents. Awesome. Ain't that always the way? Just when you start making some progress, I'm just gonna come along and slow you right down. So, I don't know what the deal is. I was making pretty good progress on the side of the, the truck and the bunk, obviously. But this is just slowing me right down. There's this goofy layer. It's a, I don't know if it's some kind of epoxy paint or what the deal is. So it's over top of the, it looks like there was a, yellow primer and then it was uh, maroon at one time and then it looks like maybe there was black primer put on there and then this coating which is just it's thick it's got a I don't know if they put it on here to try and combat rocks getting tossed at it because I didn't I didn't see this same crap on the side of the bunk but it is proving just miserable to try and cut through and peel off of here like I burned up a, almost a whole wheel just doing this one little section it's incredible. I've been working on this for like the last 40 minutes. Oh, yeah, I just, I can't figure this out. I'm hoping that this crap is not on the side, on the other side, and it's just on the back here. And it's just something I gotta kind of work my way through, but what a pain in the butt. Like I say, just when I thought I was making some progress. And I wonder if, if that is why the paint stripper didn't eat into it, because it's got some kind of, like I say, some heavy duty coating. Uh, well, I guess it's not going to sand itself. I'm going to have to uh, keep on grinding on this. And Well, like they say, no rest for the wicked. I guess there's nothing else to do but keep grinding away at it. But, man, that's, uh, that's a bummer. I'll be happy when the back of this bunk is done. Oh! combat rocks getting tossed at it because I didn't I didn't see this same crap on the side of the bunk but it is proving just miserable to try and cut through and peel off of here like I burned up a, almost a whole wheel just doing this one little section it's incredible I've been working on this for like the last 40 minutes oh yeah I just I can't figure this out I'm hoping that this crap is not on the side on the other side and it's just on the back here and it's just something I gotta kinda work my way through, but what a pain in the butt. Like I say, just when I thought I was making some progress. And I wonder if, if that is why the paint stripper didn't eat into it, because it's got some kind of, like I say, some heavy duty coating. <sighs> well, I guess it's not gonna sand itself. It's, uh, that's a bummer. I'll be happy when the back of this bunk is done. Oh.
All right, well, at least that's done for the most part. And what I've realized while I was grinding away is I thought, you know, sometimes I didn't feel like getting in between each one. And then I went, well, Mark, there's only one guy that's gonna have to come back and sand that later. So I did the best I could with it. I'm actually, I don't have much left for a wheel. So I'm gonna have to dig another one out of my collection and then try and finish up this side and then the, uh, this side of the door. Oh, still a lot of work. Well, at least this is mostly missing. So maybe it won't be too bad. And I don't seem to uh, have that white coating on the side here. So it should go a little quicker. <laughs> okay that uh what started out is oh it'll be just a you know a couple hours and i'll have this whole thing sanded has been damn near the whole day but i'm pretty pleased with how far it's come i mean obviously there's still some more work to do i gotta i gotta sand the the roof caps i still gotta do some work on the cowl and all the paint's not off there. I'm still gonna have to do some fine tuning, as I mentioned with my, uh, where is it? My little, uh, my little Milwaukee, what do you call this thing, angle grinder? And I'll have to go around all of the, all of the huck bolts like that by hand. Same thing I did on the, on the snowman, which is a heck of a lot of work, because. I don't know, there's what, 500 huck bolts or huck rivets on this truck? But with every Saturday I work on it, it gets one step closer to, to being complete. And that's what I, uh, that's kind of how I live with these projects is you got to eat the elephant one bite at a time. I remember when I first brought this truck home and uh, started taking things apart. Didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> Still don't. But uh, started taking things apart and I, uh, I started getting a little panicked. Like, what did I get myself into? Maybe I got in a little over my skis, but you know what? I just calmed myself down and said, just keep doing, you know, one job at a time, finishing the job best you can, then move on to the next one and it'll get there. I mean, this is a proof in point right here. <laughs> it's getting worth got done. Of course, I probably should have finished this truck first. I kind of pivoted away, but uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's going to get there. I can feel it. And then I got to get going on the Duke too. I've been doing some work on that i'm trying to trying to get the old dash out of there well maybe the other side would be better trying to get the old dash out to put in the new dash that carmen made me now a lot of the duke episodes are on patreon and i know i know everyone complains why aren't they all on youtube well you know these projects aren't uh, aren't free and i really appreciate the support that the people that contribute to patreon give to the channel because I invested right back into the trucks to get these projects done and kind of keep up the momentum. So for those folks that, that give to Patreon, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. And uh, I wanted to give something back. So some episodes are just for them, but there is going to be some good Duke content coming up. There's the exhaust pipes for the Duke, the wicked pipes that Blake at Flyweld Fabricate welded up for me. We still got a little bit of work to do, but we're hoping to get those mounted on the uprights here in the next week or so and then fire this old girl up and see what it sounds like so that's going to be awesome uh the gear center has been working hard on some new diffs front and rear they're rebuilding a set of them for me with 373 gears because the gears that were in this truck were like 463s so i'm really grateful for them putting those together for me i'll be picking those up soon and putting those in uh, eventually the reason i want to take the dash out of there is because i want to Take the dash out, paint the interior because it's got this god awful bronze color. And I just, uh, I don't want to put those beautiful red and white panels on there and then have a little bit of bronze color show through. So, I was thinking what I was going to do is pull the dash out of there, clean it up as best I can, maybe do some light scuffing, and then prime and paint the inside of the cab here with the metallic red, the same color I'm going to use on the outside of the truck. 
And then after that, I can put the new dash in and then uh, put in the day cab company interior and kind of build this truck from the inside out. Third time's a charm. I hope I'm gonna learn from the, uh, my first two trucks and do this one in the right order. But again, if you wanna see all the episodes, I, I sprinkle the odd episode on YouTube for everyone to see, but if you wanna see all the episodes on the Duke, go check out the Patreon, links down below in the description. And yeah, uh, with that, I think, like I say, I think I've earned my treat. That was a heck of a lot of sanding. Again, I don't know how much fun it was for you to watch it. It wasn't a whole heck of a lot of fun for me to do it, but a necessary evil, I suppose. Oh, of course, my shop's covered in, covered in dust now. All right, let's see if we can do this. One-handed, well, I guess two-handed, but I'm trying to hold the camera. Oh, that's not a very good pour, but good enough. <laughs> you know, trucking Coors beer east of Texas is bootlegging. Oh yeah, and I still gotta get going on the Trans Am. I know, I know a lot of you been waiting for that. Wildfire sent me this beautiful lift and uh, I haven't really had a chance to use it yet. So the plan with that is I'm gonna get, I gotta do a little bit of modification in the, in my house shop to fit Snowman in there. And once I do, I'm gonna spin the lift around and drive the Trans Am on and, uh, and start working on the Trans Am. Hopefully get that thing running by next year too. So there's plenty of work, plenty of projects, plenty of backlog, and plenty of awesome content for you to enjoy. So with that, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thanks for following along. Thanks for watching to the end. Thanks for all the support. Uh, if you can give it a thumbs up down below, I'd really appreciate it. It helps drive the, the YouTube algorithm, gets it out to more folks, and uh, feel free to comment, good, bad, or otherwise, on what I did today or what I do in any of the episodes. And with that, I'll bid you farewell. See you next week. And don't ever forget, if you got it, the trucker brought it.